I'm Amy Cherry. This local news is a service of Flagler County's Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota, here to wow ya. 24-7 armed security is coming to the Flagler County Library in Palm Coast. The decision is the first major one made by Interim Administrator Jerry Cameron and comes as three dozen homeless people live in a camp in the woods just west of the library. Cameron says he made the decision for the safety of the library's 16 employees and patrons. The guard won't have arresting powers, but will have the authority to remove folks from the library if they violate the code of conduct. No one's been injured at the library, but its director says her staff feel intimidated and harassed at times. She adds furniture has been urinated on, floors soiled, and her staff has also found syringes and other drug paraphernalia both inside and outside the library. She says littering is also an issue. But the armed security guard doesn't solve the overarching issue of homelessness. Now, there's really no plan to solve the problem, but Commissioner Joe Mullins wants to change that. While he didn't propose any ideas, he stressed the homeless are human beings, and the county needs to find a solution that's a win-win for everyone. This portion of Flagler's Morning News brought to you by the Daytona Beach International Airport, Delta Airlines nonstop to Atlanta, and starting in May, nonstop flights to New York City via American Airlines. The Public Safety Coordinating Council is meeting in hopes to bring help to the homeless. Coordinating Council Chair and County Commissioner Joe Mullins said this has been an issue in the past. We had the same issue in the community from owning shopping centers, owning different places where people were congregating and staying and it was scaring the general public. It was unsafe uh, health standards. Mullins said that they took a proactive approach and got several community groups involved and the Coordinating Council hopes to do that this time. We created a central point where we took everyone and then from there they would be evaluated and if they would determine if they had a chemical issue, if they had a mental issue, or if they had just an unemployment issue or they were down on their luck and then they would get them the service that they need. In a news release, the Coordinating Council said they invited representatives from several groups like the Salvation Army, Volusia Flagler Coalition on Homeless, Second Harvest Food Bank, Family Renew Community, and Flagler County Social Services to a Wednesday morning Coordinating Council meeting. It's at 845. It's in the Emergency Operations Center. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Deb Albertson. Plans for a new pier in Flagler Beach inch forward. City Manager Larry Newsom says FEMA has committed $10 million for the construction of a new pier, and he expects a public workshop on the issue in the coming weeks. The nearly century-old pier was badly damaged by Hurricane Matthew in 2016 when 160 feet was ripped off its end. The pier was closed for eight months and underwent nearly $1 million in repairs. A new pier would be made of concrete and covered with wooden planks. Construction would take about two years and no estimate has been given for what that structure would cost. But Newsom called the pier vital to the city. It was a close race, but last week's election results in Benel will stand. Tony Magoo reports. After three days, it all came down to just two votes deciding the outcome. Benel City Commission candidate Jan Rieger will be the first to tell you that every vote counts because she got two, and that may be all she needs in her contest with Daisy Henry. The difference on election night was 98-96 over former Commissioner Henry. The provisional ballot that was cast on election day was finally accepted by the Benel Canvassing Board on Friday. Flagler County Supervisor of Elections Katie Lenhart said that the provisional ballot did not change the outcome, and the margin between Rieger and Henry remained at 0.72%. This meant that there was no recount required, and therefore, we had a winner. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Tony Magoo. You hope you never need them, but the Rescue Task Force is at the ready if you do. John Arking has more. Flagler Beach Fire Captain Stephen Cox joined WNZF's Free For All Friday to talk about the Rescue Task Force that will respond to an active shooter situation wearing armor so they don't have to wait for the situation to be safe to help after arriving police officers make the initial entry. Fire Rescue is not going to stand by and, and wait as they search a you know 10,000 square foot building. So the next arriving officers are going to team up with Fire Rescue personnel. We're going to outfit our fire rescue personnel with ballistic gear, and we're going to go directly into the hot zone with these officers and attempt to reduce as many casualties as we can. You know, we're finding that these victims are bleeding out. Time is our enemy. And if we can get into an area 
and make grabs and pull them out and working directly with law enforcement, it's been proven that we can save many lives here. But the task force needs money for the equipment, and Heroes First Home Loans is helping to raise those funds with a golf tournament at Beachfront Grill in a couple of weeks. They're also holding a raffle for two homemade American flag boards. Those tickets are available at GoFundMe.com slash Flagler Fire. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm John Arking. And now you're up to date on Flagler's Morning News. I'm Amy Cherry.